so you do a lot of organic stuff and posting in Instagram and Facebook, or you get featured in different articles, or you're on a podcast and somebody goes and searches you on Google, like everybody should be putting a five to ten dollar a day budget for just a Google branded search. Simple search campaign you put up to where somebody types in Matt Holmes or HMFIC marketing, like branded terms that are to you, your products or services, that should be going because that's going to help one and the other like they play together welcome to the land life podcast with your host pj riley hey guys welcome to the land life podcast my name is pj riley guys i usually say you know uh, if we're getting value from this like subscribe Dude, guys, do me a favor. Check out my TikTok. I'm, and I know a guy who's 44 years old should not be playing on TikTok, but I'm doing it. Uh, the account is PJ Riley is Land Life. Check it out. Uh, add me. I don't know. I don't even know what you do on TikTok. Do you subscribe? Do you add? Uh, I'm not really sure, but hit me up on TikTok, guys. Um, today, guys, uh, the guest is Matt Holmes. Matt and I met on uh, in, in a networking group called Arate. Um, let me see here. I'm wearing my Arate, kind of like a G.I. Joe Arate shirt here. Um, but yeah, Matt and I met in Arate. Uh, it's like a networking group uh, hosted by or it's run by Ed Milet and Andy Frizzella. So, uh, you know, a lot of great business stuff, uh, you know, in that group. Matt, how you doing? Good, man. Good. I appreciate you for uh, bringing me on and stuff and chatting with you and your your audience here. Absolutely. Matt, where are you? Uh, where are you located? Northern Minnesota, so Hibbing, as we talked about, to be exact, and if people don't know, it's a like couple hours from the Canadian border, so pretty much if you've ever watched Game of Thrones, you know, when they say winter's coming, that's the place. <laughs> right on. So well, I'm guessing there's a lot of lakes up there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like I say Minnesota, like, I think they have what they say, like, you know, the land is home of 10,000 lakes, but I think there's technically over that you just you're driving and you constantly see like i don't know what they constitute as like a pond and a, and a lake technically but you see them all over even now i've been here for god like seven years and i'll sometimes find I'm like holy shit i didn't know like behind all these trees i've driven by it a bunch of times and there's a big lake there there oh there's a lake there there's a lake like you just i still find them all the time and i've only been to a few there's tons of them around here and of course now we've got a boat and everything like that yeah there's just not enough time in the summer to actually go and enjoy it because i am not a winter ice fishing anything like that no thank you i stay inside all winter <laughs> you guys have mosquitoes in the summer too right like you have real yeah real bugs out there yeah lots I've, I've got some now i went camping <laughs> and everything my kids are got mosquito bites it's it's the worst part about the summer, of course, is the mosquitoes, yeah. but I'll I'll take it, you know, compared to the cold. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Do you guys have you guys do you guys do stand up paddle boarding? Um, I've done a few times. I suck. I just need practice yeah, probably some more. But my my kids do it. My wife my wife does it. We've got you know the the sit down double little pedal paddle boards, stand up paddle boards, you know kayaks all that kinds of stuff see we just started so we 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 paddleboarded a few times but mm -hmm. we actually had to get our own paddle boards and we went up this last weekend uh up to the mountains and we were practicing we went out there two different times uh to paddleboard so we can we're considering ourselves a, a paddleboard family now we're a stand-up yeah. paddleboard family you got some of the people that are they're boaters you got the jet skiers you got the uh kayakers we're gonna be stand-up paddle boarders that's <laughs> what we're gonna as we decided cool. we're gonna have to do it's a fun exercise you know and they're and they're they're pretty awesome but yeah i'm uh i'm a i'm a sit on the boat and cruise around kind of guy <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. it's it's not safe to be a, a a drinking a ton too and i'm in the middle of a lake and i i got a life jacket on but i'm not really much of a if it's it, i can't touch the bottom it's not a safe thing for me yeah because yeah. i'm gonna fall off Oh yeah, that, that's me. I, I fall, I fall on them. I can sit on them, you know, and push myself around. But sure, I, I stand up, and I like said, I just haven't done it a whole lot. Where yeah, my wife and everybody, they they get on ours and they take off, and I'm like, yep, I'm going on the boat. See yeah. 
All right, Matt, you are in you are the owner, the CEO of HMFIC. I'll let you guys figure out what that means. Say it again. HMFIC marketing agency. Um, you guys are doing Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube. You're 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 helping businesses market everywhere. Yep. Uh, kind of let us know like how you got started in that. Like, like bring us up to speed, like to, to where we are today. Okay. Yeah. So I'll try and try and make it really condensed down. <laughs> um, but I started doing online. So I came from like I still remember when I heard about this entrepreneurship thing. I'm like, ooh, this sounds cool, you know, it's fancy. And this was God, you know, years and years ago, like over 10 years ago, when it was like the, it was like the buzzword, you know, before it was like a thing where that's just what people did. And like, ooh, I'm gonna be an entrepreneur. Like that would have been like I'm going to make YouTube videos years ago and be paid like, ha ha, that's dumb. Like, yeah, right. Like that, that was kind of what it was back then. Um, and I heard about it and then kind of learning about the, you know, more with the internet and I've always loved computers, online stuff at a computer, like God, 1995 was the first computer I had. My kids think that's crazy, like dinosaur <laughs> error or something. Um, and Fast forward with that, it just was something that interested me. I got involved, like I said, with kind of fitness, you know, coaching, doing all that, strength conditioning, athletes. And then was like, oh, I can do this online, you know, and found out about a few different people online. Um, and that really opened up my world. And I was young, you know, late teens, early 20s. Um, so I was still not very smart. <laughs> I could say, you know, I was a typical teenager, early 20 year old male guy living in, in Los Angeles, so partying and then figuring this stuff out at the same time while working different jobs um, and started to do kind of that, you know, training in person, had a gym and I was like, oh, I can do online too. And I always thought that would be cool. Like, hey, if I could be on a computer and I can create a business and I can market it and then like do all these different things. I was like, right when Twitter was coming out, like all this stuff. Um, and God, I wish I would have taken it even more serious and kind of listened a bit more. You know, it's always those things. Oh, man, where would I be now? Like, who knows? Who cares? But, you know, you think about that. It's just interesting to me of like, God, what what would have been different now if I took it as serious as I did later in life? Yeah. And seeing some of the other friends and people I, I am still have contact with, like all the crazy shit and what they've done then and now. Um, but like I said, kind of fast forward to that, you know. Years later, started to work for uh, a mentor of mine, you know, did military stuff, was overseas, did online, worked online while I was overseas. So that was kind of cool. I finally did what I'd always thought about doing, um, you know, lived in, in Romania, which is when I met my wife through Facebook. Thanks for, you know, <laughs> something pretty cool there, Zuckerberg. Um, <laughs> met her and I was just kind of working online, doing fitness stuff still, Um coaching, things like that, and then moved back to the States, uh, you know, when I met her and never even went back, left a bunch of my shit, mailed some of it home. And that was kind of, kind of wow. it from there. Yeah, it was, it was pretty crazy. Uh, but like I said, then I started to work, reached out to a longtime mentor of mine, uh, and he had a new project and I hustled away and he was like, cool, let's start your part-time. And then it, when it gets to here, let's bring you on full-time. So I was doing that. Real quick, what year are we in right now? When, uh, this, this is 2022 now, July 26th. No, 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 no. What, oh, <laughs> what year like, are you I, in? I didn't know if you wanted me to date this for now. For, no, no, no. <laughs> so that that was probably, like I said, six, five, six years ago. Okay. I would say okay. probably about six. Let's just say between six and seven years ago Okay. Okay. when that started. Um, and then, you know, that turned into a full-time thing. I did that for, for a few years. Um, and that was like working all behind the scenes. He had a membership site. I, I was one of the OGs on zoom. <laughs> I like to say <laughs> not when COVID hit, I've been using it for forever now. Um, doing recordings for the membership site, operations, like learning all kinds of stuff with the tech and like the real back end instead of trying to be like the front end person. I was the like the behind the scenes guy, even though I did a lot of interviews because it was for entrepreneurs about business. So I interviewed a lot of different guests on specific things that they did, their business or skills they had. Um, and then I started learning more of the paid traffic because he had a big list. Like he's been in the online game for a long time. 
Um, but then we're like, cool, let's do more paid traffic. Let's really grow this membership site, all this different stuff that we have, lead magnets, continue grows email lists. And cutting that short, it turned into like, hey, this is pretty cool. I actually enjoy doing it. And, you know, I've got seven kids. I get a big family. It's like, hey, I need to make more. It ended up being the thing, well, here's the best opportunity was start doing Facebook ads for other businesses because I was doing good with it. And, you know, now here I am like four years later since I started full time with my agency. Um, and that's even grown and gone through iterations since then. You know, I've been kind of stuck in this bubble of the agency where it was just Facebook ads for a long time. Um, certain kinds of businesses, service based businesses, lead generation, you know, high ticket stuff. So I focused on a very small now that I see small bubble of things where I've got all this vast kind of knowledge when it comes to marketing and sales and like online stuff and paid traffic is like the laser focus skill set. Uh, but I was like, God, there's a lot of other businesses, even brick and mortar, small businesses. My wife's got a, a business here in town. I was like, Hey, I can help a lot more of these. So, uh, the agency is still a, a key part of it, but it's almost, I don't take on as many there. Now I do that but more like one-on-one -on -one coaching consulting for businesses, small businesses. And then I do like group coaching now online too for small businesses mm. um, that are kind of more starting out and want to get to the, the other levels, whether it's with me or like they do their own thing. Um, that's kind of like where I'm at now is kind of coaching, consulting, helping them understand all what goes into online marketing, advertising, running paid traffic, because paid ads are like, one piece of like an 18 piece puzzle let's just say like it's yeah. one small portion and there's all these different things that they all interact and affect each other it's like a, a a whole living organism can't have the heart without the lungs but they both do their own thing um so that's kind of where we're right now why we started to do more like i start i say we i used to have kind of a team but i scale back on that um with kind of the change of direction that i'm in now uh, to where we yeah, we do Google, you know, Facebook ads, we're starting to do TikTok, um, all those kinds of things. And then, like I said, coaching small businesses where people are like, hey, what do you do? I help small businesses get more leads and customers, like easy, simple way to put it. And I know that was longer description than I really wanted it to go. But <laughs> that, that's really, really in the, in the nutshell, like I said, over the past, you know, experience of that and then working with businesses doing paid ads. But helping them more than that with strategy. And overall, it's like one piece of the puzzle of everything else. And kind of why I'm more of the anti-agency in a way and like coaching consulting, because I can take that skill set. But there's so much more. And when people hire me as an agency, it tends to be more of a challenge where if I can help with the ads, but knowing that there's so much more because of funnels and their offers and all this different stuff that they can do, and things I can help actual like brick and mortar businesses do to just make their whole customer experience better with the because I've had my own in person. My wife's got, you know, brick and mortar business. There's so much more out there. And um, so this year has been a big kind of eye opening of, hey, there's, there's a lot more I can do to help businesses besides why well, I have an agency and we do Facebook ads. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's so confusing. Like if I, I, run, I run a business as well and understanding Facebook advertising, Google advertising, um, Instagram, all these YouTube, all these different things is, is super confusing. It, it sounds like you kind of, uh, you were jumping in before everybody else in a lot of different uh, avenues, I guess, you know, doing, wanting to do your personal training online before anybody even knew what that really was, uh, you mm -hmm. know, jumping into, um, you know, coaching and stuff like that years prior to anybody. Were you using like a platform when you were doing uh, the coaching, like a Kajabi or were you guys building your own? Yeah, Kajabi wasn't even a thing yeah. almost like back then. Um, gosh, I can't remember when I, cause I started to build out my own membership site online when I was in like Romania and stuff. God, I can't even remember what it was, but it was a WordPress. WordPress has been around forever and it was yeah. some built in, you know, plug in type of a membership platform that was within WordPress and building in with all of that. And then the rest of it was very simple, 
you know, here's a simple website and kind of building plug and play, but it was all off of WordPress. WordPress has yeah. been around forever and still a lot of people use it. Hell, even my website's still on WordPress for my main <laughs> website right now because uh, it's super simple and easy to edit. But there's all different kinds of tools and this and that, you know, and like yeah. you said, there's Kajabi, there's Teachable, there's School is a new one, all these different platforms out there and ClickFunnels and Unbounce is so many different things. Um, but yeah, this was before the options, like it's almost more confusing and harder now, you know, <laughs> than it was back in. It was like, here's a few things and here's this and here's some forums and, you know, let's make some YouTube videos and put some YouTube videos on there. And I did that more in a, a local aspect, you know, and I actually started to get people into my gym that way or find out that I did boot camps and stuff like that. It was yeah. really the early days of a lot of that stuff but you know i was dumb young made a lot of mistakes should have should have done this shouldn't have done that kind of yeah, a deal yeah. and you know then I ended up signing up and going into the army and stuff anyways like i'll come back and i always knew i was like i'll come back to doing this stuff later but i'm going to put it aside for right now and that was like a huge gap that i stopped kind of doing all that stuff and then jumped back into it later yeah. Yeah. That, that's super interesting, though. Even the fact that you had that idea in your head, you know, <clears throat> it's like Wayne Gretzky says, sorry, Wayne Gretzky says, go to where the puck is going to be, not where it's at currently. Right. That's kind of what you were thinking. You were thinking ahead. And I think yeah. a lot of entrepreneurs, you know, they they want to do that, but they show up, you know, they show up the day that the thing is already there. You know, they didn't yeah. show up three years, four years prior when they could have really taken advantage of it. Yeah. And that's kind of the the change in direction. I've, I've learned a lot more to trust my gut and my instincts and yeah. lean more on that where like anybody, I doubt, I doubt myself up five minutes ago, like, or whatever, before we started this call, Yeah, I was doubting myself. I'm like, shit, do I, do I suck? Like, do I really know what I'm doing? Like, God, these other people seem to be way better than me, or they know more than me. Like, we're all like that. And yeah. some of that comes in with the doubt. And I'm like, gosh, you know, I actually probably do. You know, I, I do know. And I know that, like, let me trust my gut and lean on the experience. Because that's the big thing is I do have a lot of experiences, whether they're failures, successes, Absolutely. trials and errors, like a lot of experiences that I have that other people don't have because they haven't been in that point or like yeah. my gut's telling me like, Hey, Facebook's good. And that's my bread and butter, but it doesn't take a lot either to get going on these other networks. Well, okay, let's start learning. Let's start introducing some of that to our clients with, you know, Google search stuff, you know, it's huge and powerful that we've seen for a lot of businesses and doesn't take a lot. Yeah. Well, okay. You're not locked into one platform. Now you can do that. And they actually, we've shown work together. You know, people on Facebook see your ad and they go search for you on Google or vice versa, you know, things like that. Um, and then YouTube works for some businesses, some it doesn't certain things. So there are, you know, things to think about with that, but I'm not early in any chance on it, but there's still a lot of people that aren't doing it because yeah. Facebook's so easy or even like TikTok, it's, it's blowing up and it's huge as far as like the ad side. It's been big as far as a platform and it's still getting bigger. But, you know, TikTok ads aren't new by any means. They introduced it well over a year ago when it was beta testing and all that. We got in on it early and I was like, you know what? I'm going to focus on social. I'll let other people figure it out. And the platform had issues, this and that. And now it's way better. So more people are getting onto it now, including us like, oh, okay. Now I'll start focusing on more, but it's like the early days of Facebook is what I was saying on TikTok. And that's true. Like a lot of people are getting on it, but a lot of people aren't. Same thing with YouTube. So it's like, that's kind of where, with what made me think of that, where you're saying it's like, it's kind of adapting and doing some of these things that aren't necessarily early, but are, I guess, in a way yeah, when it yeah. comes to advertising. There's still time. Life. Yeah, and then a lot of people are resistant to stuff, you know, like and that's what I've seen on my side is Facebook's so easy uh, for people to do and to use, which is great, but it has its pros and cons, you know, yeah. to other platforms and maybe there's other things and some of it's laziness that people don't want to do the time and effort to create the, the videos and test the different videos and hooks and this and that and learn a new platform and because TikTok's new, it's different. You got to create different content. Then I could throw up 
an image and some text copy and send it to my website and put it up and done and easy on Facebook, super quick, where TikTok's a little different. You know, the platform as far as the ads, very similar to Facebook, but they're just different. And people have a resistance. Like that, it's just crazy to me how resistant people are to wanting to stay comfortable. But we're all entrepreneurs and we know like it's not comfortable <laughs> a lot of times, but they get into kind of that comfortable part and like, well, I don't want to jump in. I'm just going to keep doing this. And it's like, all right. I'll yeah, like... I think a lot of people are worried about their image too. So like uh, yeah. as far as Facebook is cool for the older, I guess, older generation, you know, 30s, 40s, 50s kind of guys, um, which is fine. You know, your friends think it's normal that you're, you're advertising on Facebook. When you go to TikTok, they're like, who does this guy think he is, you know? Yeah. It's like, you're not a like, you're not 15 years old. You can't be on TikTok. But if you get on there and you look around, you're like, wow, there's a lot of, there's a lot of eyeballs on, on TikTok oh, yeah. that are not just teenagers. It's, it oh is yeah. And it's growing more teenagers. and more with that, with the demographics Absolutely. and things like that. And it's, it's crazy. I get caught in if we, you know, we go down that rabbit hole, like even this morning, like I still am playing with it more. And I was like, I did not realize how many people just go live and just sit there and, yeah. play music or i i don't know why i see shitloads of people doing like tarot card readings i don't know why it shows up to me also. like i don't do it my wife used to do a lot she doesn't as much anymore so i'm like i don't think it's really that but it's like i see that and then just people sitting there like they just almost like vlog their daily life yeah. on that like and some of the stuff i was like wow this is really dumb like this is what's wrong with society. <laughs> a lot of times you see like, this is what people are doing. Like, yeah. no wonder your life sucks in a way, you know, like to, to be honest there, but it's kind of cool to see some of it was like, wow, like, okay. Like there's a lot of different stuff that's out there. And it just shows how early that platform is too, with the Absolutely. users and mm -hmm. anybody can get on it. And it doesn't take a lot, like even organic, if we put paid stuff aside, there's the problem people have with organic is it can, and usually does take a bit more time because you can pay to get distribution. Hey, here's this ad that I created. Here's this audience I want to go to, and here's this money, go show it to them where the organic side, it's slower. You can't like, yeah. you don't pay to distribute it. You're up to people liking sharing like the algorithm scene you're putting valuable content it has like to be good it. yeah and however <laughs> it looks stop. at it and distributes and some goes up and down instagram's been really shitty for a lot of it but i think they saw that because they updated it last week with just the look and the feel of the feed now is totally different but i put up a reel where uh, like usually they they were and i i haven't been doing a lot for my own which is funny i'm in a spot now doing a lot more of my own organic and content and all that where for years i've been doing it for clients and yeah screwed myself over not doing it for myself and it's like oh okay see like the views are getting more and then it was like instantly they changed the algorithm and put out i'm saying they changed the algorithm they haven't said it but they put out the update and boom it got like a 3000% increase in views wow. within a couple hours compared to all the other ones I've put up before. And it's like, well, so things like that, you know, change. And there's a lot organically like, yeah, I, I love, you know, pay-per-click stuff, paid ads, but there's a lot of organic things you can do that help your paid advertising or your organic that you can do that helps your paid. Let's say you do a lot of organic stuff and posting in Instagram and Facebook or you get featured in different articles or you're on a podcast and somebody goes and searches you on Google, like everybody should be putting a five to $10 a day budget or just a Google branded search, simple search campaign you put up to where somebody types in Matt Holmes or HMFIC marketing, like branded terms that are to you, your products or services that should be going because that's going to help one and the other, like they play together in that way. So you know, paid traffic is just one part of it, but the organic stuff, you know, works really well. And you can see yeah. people jumping on TikTok now and being really early, early adopters where there's people that have been doing it, but it's still so early. Like I'm starting to do, it. I'm telling my wife, like, Hey, you need to be doing, whether you like it or not, 
you you should be doing it. You don't have to be everywhere. I'm not saying you got to post on all these different ones, yeah. but for me personally, I think that's really you know TikTok's huge, but I think it's still very infant. Yeah, it's an infancy stage. It's going to get bigger and bigger for paid and organic stuff. Yeah, and and I've seen on so I look up my industry, you know, basically the, the land investing or real estate investing business, mm-hmm. and um, the majority of the the content is really, I think it's really bad. You know, it's just not good. But they have tons of views, tons of likes, comments because they're doing it so often as well. You know, like uh, when you say that organic traffic. Um, they are actually posting so often, like every day they're posting something interesting, something new. It's not good. I don't even think it's good. And it's yeah. you know, going coming from the industry that I'm in. I know it's not uh, it's it's there's there's some uh, you can you can get on there and beat them if you just if you were as consistent as they are. Um, they're yeah. very beatable. But I think that's how TikTok is. And I wish I would have done Facebook so many years ago. Uh, when it was in that same position, you know, when you just needed to start getting out there, guys like, uh, what was it? Ty Lopez, Grant mm-hmm. Cardone, these guys that are just, they just put tons of content out there. I mean, they use their phones, you know, and they just got out there and now they're, they're big dogs. You know, they're, they're the big players in the game. Yeah. Um, you just have to start, start doing it, you know, like that's, and even for me, like, it's not easy for me to do it sometimes. Like, am I going to sound stupid? And I used to get in my head a lot and, and I didn't post for a long time, you know, or I barely would here and there. And now there's part of a mentality aspect and approach you got to take to it of like really trying to give value, not just trying to put something out there to sure. get something back from it. Of course, single, like you want to have content, you want to be giving value and people will come back, but not of doing it to get something in a way. Um but it doesn't take a lot. People like, oh, I need this huge camera, this and that to do YouTube ads. Like, yeah, it looks great, but there's plenty of ads and successful people that use a phone. Like, this is a good camera right here. Yeah. Like, it is, you see some of the commercials that they film with the phones. Like, you're like, holy shit, this must have been a crazy camera. Like, no, it wasn't. They're not lying when it was filmed on an iPhone. Yes, there's some editing and things like that involved. But it doesn't take a lot. Like I just started doing stuff and I'm like, cool, here's some topics. I've got this little thing here now that's in front of me. It's like I saw it on Instagram ad. I'm really good at, you know, seeing ads and buying stuff, you know, it's kind <laughs> of funny. Um, but it was just like this little tripod comes with a light, comes with a better microphone, because all you really like, you don't need all that stuff to start, but then okay, get a better light for you. And then sound is very important. So even if the image quality is kind of okay. Yeah, but sound like if the sounds choppy or there's a lot of background noise, people aren't going to listen to it. They don't really care if like the video or you don't have this cool background or some crazy fancy camera and tons of lights. Like if the sound sucks, like you're lost right there. If you're giving value and you can make it entertaining, you know, like say infotainment, so inf- information and entertainment, mm-hmm. like that's the stuff that works. People want to be entertained and get some value out of it. Having a good microphone, like this thing cost me, I think it's like 120 bucks for these little things. And I've had people like, oh my God, what do you use on that? Like, <laughs> this is all I use. Like, it's nothing yeah. fancy. It's just putting it out there. You can do some slight edits. They all have captions now. You just click the button. And if it's off, you can edit them. But I don't even edit them. Like, I've looked at some of the most like popular people. I'm like, you can tell they don't edit their shit. <laughs> yes, like, absolutely. It, I'm like, I don't care, whatever. Like, even it's funny, some of our best ads that have performed have had, you know, some grammar like messed up errors in the ad yeah. copy itself, or even in some of the captions. And yes, I've had clients where they're like, oh, it needs to be changed. I'm like, cool, if you want to change it, we'll change it. The ad's working and it's doing better than the others. So I'm going to tell you, don't change it because yeah. it's not guaranteed that we'll change it. And I would say probably, every time we've changed it, it has not performed as good. And that could be multiples of reasons, but people don't care is kind of the point that I'm getting is like, you can have misspellings and yeah, you're going to have some grammar Nazis or this or that. No one gives a shit about that. Yes. I don't care. Nobody else cares because people care about the value of the content that you're putting out there. And again, whether that's organic or paid or anything like that, like that's what people are looking for. They want connection. They want to be entertained and they want to get some value out of it. 
Yeah. That's all. I, I think that's why people don't start too. Why, why they don't start their marketing. They're so nervous that their friends are going to see this and they're going to look stupid. You know, like I make a lot of errors. I make a lot of mistakes. I'm not polished. Um, but, uh, you know, why not? Let's let's get out there and just talk and and try to give people some sort of value and see what happens. You know, worst case scenario, they just don't watch it. Right? Yeah, and I That's guarantee no matter who, there. like you're going to have value, whether it's just entertainment or you do have some information to teach somebody and give them value in that way yeah. for somebody out there. Like, because we, you can meet anybody off the street. And you're going to learn something from them that you didn't know. Like, that's just true. Some people are just give way more value and are better at it, but they all started somewhere and they all sucked yeah, pretty much yeah, absolutely. when they started. Like Tony Robbins wasn't a great speaker when he started. He learned, but yeah. he started. And like, I think it's just normal and you have to do it. Like you talked about, you know, Andrew Frisella, he talks about it still to this day. He's had, he had like the number one podcast for years and he's still yeah. up there with the new podcast he has. And he's like, listen to my first one. He's like, I sucked, but I just kept doing it and doing it and doing it. And he said he sucked when he started public speaking. And now he's one of the best and gets paid shitloads of money. But he's like, I did it and I sucked, but it was about the value and then you practice and everybody goes through. I go through it. I've got an event here in town next month for just small business owners in the area. So I was like, God, like I want to help my area. I want to help boost the business. Like I want to see it do better around here and help business owners. And I can give more value. Like I don't have to be in this bubble I've done. There's a lot of carryover and information that I could do to help them. But at the same time, I'm like, God, I hope I don't suck. <laughs> I hope I actually I hope I hope people show up for one. People have I to hope show up. Don't bomb. I hope I give some value and it's not just garbage that comes out of my mouth that day, where that's just a natural human thing. Like I know I can give value, but it doesn't mean I don't doubt myself and be like, God, oh, what if I really suck? And I do another one and people are like that guy, don't go see him. He has no <laughs> idea what he's talking about. I think about that just like everybody else, but yeah. Well, fuck it. I just scheduled it. I put it out there. I'm like, done. I can't Absolutely. get rid of it now. Yep. People know it's there. People are interested and wanting to come and I can't take it down now because then what am I going to look like? That's worse to me than that little doubtful voice in my head. Absolutely. Yeah. That time would have came and passed and you would not have spoken and you would have regretted it. Um, you know, one thing I think is, is really important is preparation. You know, mm -hmm. be prepared prior to whatever speech, video or anything like that you're doing. Um, you know, have a set, I mean, you're going to flow usually when you get up there and start talking, especially if you understand the topic, but, you know, have some sort of something in place to where if you do miss, mess up and you are a little bit nervous and you don't do it right, that you can fall back on it. You have kind of not necessarily a set script, but a starting, you know, an intro, an exit, and then some topic in, in, in the middle. Um, yeah. So let's but say we got to go analyze it for some people because you get that whole paralysis by analysis yeah. of like, because I did that for a lot too. I'm like, oh, what am I going to talk about? And I start thinking about it. I'm like, oh, okay, I'll say this, this. And then I'm like, like I kind of go down the rabbit hole where like I would even say too, if like you have some of that, the second you get an idea, like open up your phone, talk about it and put it out there. Even if you're like, holy shit, you watch it later. Like I rambled on too much. I did this, I did that. Like, okay, on to the next one. Yeah. Now, you know, you did it now keep that in mind and then do it again and do it again. And yeah, like you said, if you're like, well, I don't know what to think about. <laughs> I just make a doc. So if like I have a, a client that's asking me a question or some topic comes up to talk to a client or somebody asks me, I'm like, boop, there's a topic. Boop, there's a topic. Or my kids, my kids, my kids teach me <laughs> something that uh, I can relate to marketing or can relate to life. Like, so there's a, a crossover because that's always good. If people can, you can relate it to something that's pretty wide for most people to experience, but then put it into the specifics and like kind of niche of what you're talking about. That stuff always works good. And just have a running note of that. Um, and sometimes, yeah, when I've done like live trainings, I'm like, God, not a lot of people show up yeah. and ask questions. What am I going to talk about? At first, I sucked doing interviews and doing those things. And then I would just have an note. Well, if I don't know, I'm going to talk about this. And then 
as you get better, it's like you could just start flowing with those things. And it's like, oh, okay, like, but you don't start that way. Everybody sucks when they start. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's 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 just it's experience, you know, just consistency. Keep doing it over and over again. And even just now, I stuttered, you know, I messed up, I fumbled over my words. It happens, you know. Who cares? I'm gonna keep talking, I'm not gonna stop. Um, yeah. so let's say somebody is 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 confident, they're ready to go, they're ready to put content out there. Now they need strategy as far as like online uh, success. You know, they need to get those ads out there. They want people to see their ads. If I'm going to come to you, what does that look like? Like right away? What does day one look like for me? So I guess that that depends. Like there's, there's kind of some variances with that, that can go into it. Like if somebody came to me, I would first want to see like, Hey, where their business is at, what they've done. Cause I very much was like a lot of my agency stuff is very high end. it's it's higher tier as far as the cost and the kind of business that we do like it's not for brand new people mm -hmm. due to the cost and how we can make the biggest help so that's also why i started to do other things so i'm like god there's all these people i can help that i want to succeed but they don't fit with that so i feel bad just being like oh sorry i can't help you you know <laughs> see you later like come back to me when you're doing this um so you got to kind of look at some of that first like you know, what's the product? Is it brand new? Like I would say if somebody hasn't like done any sales and it's brand new, like it's a new business, like ads are not for you. Like you're jumping way ahead of the process. And that's, we're doing some of the organic and just creating more conversations. That's anybody. Like even for me right now with a lot of the direction stuff I'm doing, I'm like cool, more conversations, the more value and stuff I can put in the marketplace, the more opportunities will come from it. Like yeah. that's it. And that's what I would say for a lot of people when it's new, reach out to your network. So a lot of us have networks already. So who can you have value to who anybody can be clients, you know, letting people know, here's what I'm doing. So like outside of the ad stuff, but let's say you are, and you've had proof, like you've got clients, you've got income coming in. You're like, cool. Like I'm in a place now to where let's just say you're doing five to 10 K a month you know, in your small business, which some people it's like, holy shit, I can't wait to get there. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. But I have some where they're like, yeah, I want to do ads and they're not there yet. Like you can get to that without ads. So my ghost must have just opened my door. Um, <laughs> I swear to God, there's a ghost in my office. So I, 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 I pulled that. my gun out before because I thought somebody was outside my door, like not to go off on the side, but like yeah. my office door was like shaking like somebody was outside of it, like trying to get in. And I yeah. pulled the gun off my desk and like, I went and opened the door because it was so creepy and like <laughs> went like, what the hell? And so I clear the house for, first. Yeah, it was the craziest thing at again. my door. I just heard it now like clink and then it opened. So I guess they wanted to come hang out. And wow. check. Well, we got ghosts. We got, we got, a, we got an audience <laughs> live yep. studio audience of, of yeah a live studio audience so it must be good <laughs> um so if let's say you know back to like if you're doing about 5 to 10k like you can get to that organically yes it's going to take some time but your your time energy and money is going to be spent better that way versus going into ads cuz you don't know what's working what's not like you haven't kind of tested and improved and let's just call it like your your proof of concept your minimum viable product yeah. to do those things so when you get to that point okay what should i start looking into where should i go now TikTok being a new thing that could be one and it is a good area where i would say it's like that possibly or going into facebook um, outside of some simple like say google branded search i would start doing some of that in the early stages because again it's like five bucks five ten bucks it's not mm. going to cost you a lot and it probably won't even spend all of that per day because it's based off a of search volume. So the more popular, the more people that are searching for you or competitors that are doing ads against you, trying to take your traffic for people that are searching for you, you know, that your costs are going to go up. So it's not going to cost a lot there. But then I would start with like a Facebook or possibly TikTok, you know, uh, on those. Because again, it's not costing a lot. YouTube works for some not others those kinds of things and it can tend to cost a little bit more because you have to let things run longer tests you know there's not to dive too deep into but that's the ones i would go with first for most people again there's exceptions things like that but for most that's what i look at but i wouldn't jump into that 
until you're looking between like five to 10K a month because you have to know you're going to be spending money. Some of it, you're not going to get back right away. You're testing, like it's a whole new area. Like you don't know what audiences are working, how to do your ads, what to put out, what ads work, what don't, like all these different things to where you have to invest into that. And now you're taking cold traffic into your world where like the organic was cold, but it's typically you're warming them up. They're finding, they're getting value. So it's not like, here's an ad, opt in, buy my stuff. You know, like that's a yeah. whole different realm and process when you start to get into the paid traffic area of funnels and taking people through certain processes and getting the desired action, giving the value, getting their email or getting a purchase, you know, those kinds of things. Um, but as far as like the best way I'd say is like five to 10K, once you're making that, then you can start looking into those areas. Because again, it costs money and there's an investment sure. within those different things that you're doing. But you can also still take your other content and, you know, you can put some of that out there, get some more reach through that way, especially if you see something taking off of your organic content. There's ways and things you can do, but like, cool, I want to get more reach from that. But a lot of times I wouldn't even do that. Like, let the system do that because it's giving you that organic reach and it's liking it. It's where like, oh, we all want to go viral. Yeah. You know, you'll, you'll get a lot of that stuff. I said my video that I posted last week. You know, some they usually get a few hundred views, this and that, because it's still newer. And Instagram wasn't giving a lot of people a lot of views, even friends that have hundreds of thousands. Mm. Their reels are getting a thousand, a few thousand, like they weren't getting yeah. a lot. It's crazy. And then that one got like almost 5,000. Shit. Like yeah, that's right. 5,000 people that most of them, I guarantee, because I don't have that many even on my Instagram, don't have never seen me before. Yeah. And then I'm starting to get people to reach out to me that like, oh, hey, I want to know this. I know this. So there's a lot that you can do on the organic side. But when you get into paid, it's like I said, it's a different world, but it's it's a lot of fun and it, it's a numbers game. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and I know a lot of people are racing to get to where they can monetize mm -hmm. um, YouTube, you know, uh, podcasting, things like that. I want to um, monetize what... and scale. That's like the hot words. <laughs> yes. Everybody wants, well, cause you know, I mean, I'm not going to get too deep into it, but you know, there's not a lot of people going back to work right now. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people want to get rich online. Um, yeah. so we're, they're, they're looking to these, uh, you know, YouTube channels or, or whatever podcasting, any, all these different options and they want to monetize as fast as possible. Would that be worthwhile to force? So, so to do paid ads to get your YouTube channel to whatever the, you know, the specific number it needs to be at to start monetizing. Uh, if they truly believe it's going to monetize at some point. I am gonna you're almost like gambling at that point. Yeah. Cause it's not as easy as people think. Like you can't just start having your kids open up toys and video in it and put it on there and think like, I'm going to get millions of views and I'm going to have 3 million people subscribing to my channel. Like, a lot of that stuff has come and gone and there's still people that will come out and do it, but they're not like an overnight success mm -hmm. either. Like, yeah. and you can't force it either. You know, it's going to, if people are like, Oh, I want to spend all this money to market and build my brand and do all this different stuff and get more subscribers. And I'm going to monetize that. It's not an instant thing. Like you're going to have to spend a lot of money and, I would say on top of that, like, again, what, what, like, what's the plan there? If it's to just to get paid by viewership and make money off of YouTube and, you know, ads and stuff that are running on your, your stuff, like, yeah, most everybody's almost going to fail at that. You're going to need something. And again, let's say something changes. Here's, here's a part people are starting to realize too. If you're tied and that's your whole business, what if all of a sudden they take that out of the platform? holy shit, you just lost a seven figure business, let's Absolutely. say overnight. Like you really didn't have a real business at that point. So I like getting emails and getting things so you're not solely relying on the platform, use it, play with it, utilize it, but have ways to where if that changes, then what do you do? Oh, light just died. Then what do you do? You know, how does they, uh, how are you going to change on things when they remove that from the platform? You know, Instagram, what was kind of down and wonky for what a day or two days. And a bunch of people panicked and saw like, holy shit, 
that was my business. Like their business died mm -hmm. overnight. It came back yeah. once Instagram died, but they saw like, okay, I'm making, let's say 10 grand a day. Now I make zero. Like it can be that bad. So like, that's also something to be prepared for is like, that's not a business. Like that's, yes, could you make a quick buck? There's, there's plenty of things of like biz op type things to where you can make a quick buck, this and that. And some people make more, some people still fail at it. But it, like, what are you creating and what's the long-term goal? Like, that's not going to be a business for you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So guys, uh, if get out there, build an actual business, then create genuine content and do it through your warm market, do it organically. Uh, and then when you're ready to, to be a big player, call, uh, call Matt. Uh, Matt, do you have like a 101 course at all? At all? Like the lowest level, like intro? Yeah, so course? I have like my group coaching which is like it's really the access people have there's trainings i got guest experts like i'm there so like any question you have and usually the groups and people will benefit from those questions but you can have the access to where i'm like i either know it or i can find somebody that will know it and it's like oh, okay here's what you need to do if it's on the ad level to like here's an overall like bigger mindset and strategy for what they're doing uh, then I do more of like the one-on-one -on -one mentoring, coaching, those kinds of things, which is just another level of access. So it's not like you're asking a question in the group, you get the group, but like they get direct access. They can text me. There's, you know, okay. monthly one-on-one -on -one calls. It's just more personalized for them or some businesses, some clients of ours have somebody on their team full-time. And they just need that extra help and support because they know the basics of running the ads, doing this, doing that, but they need like the direct access. So it's more mentoring. And then like I said, then there's the hiring where it's done for you. We do everything, you know, it's hands off from running it. We still work as a team because we're all going for the same goal, but they don't have to run the ads or anything. It's just completely hands off for them. Um, and like I said, there's varying prices from that to a couple hundred bucks. So like over five grand a month kind of a thing. Okay. Um, okay. But what I do... Uh, as well, too, is I do like ad audits for people. If they're like, hey, can you take a look? And just my goal is like, it's not a sales pitch or like I call it something fancy, and but it's really selling. Like it's giving value. If people at the end want to be like, hey, can I learn more? I want to work with you. Cool. You got options. But my goal is to give like two to three takeaways that they can go and implement right away, whether it's their ads, organic, like overall sales, marketing, anything to get them more leads and more customers in their business. I do those for free and they're, you know, 15 to 30 minutes, depending on, you know, how in depth or what the business is. Um, and I do those for free. Um, and the easiest way, I guess, for people to get that um, would probably just be to email me, you know, matt at hmficmarketing.com. And I can just send them a link. And even like, that's how I'm like, I don't have anything fancy. I'm like, oh, go to this website and sign up. Like, no, I don't even have that. <laughs> you know, like you don't, doesn't all have to be perfect. It probably would be easy for people to go and schedule and they don't have to email me. Cool, fine, awesome. Um, but it also shows me if somebody's reaching out to me and emailing me and going through that effort. They're probably going to be somebody that's more serious too and that I would enjoy helping and could possibly be somebody to work with that could be a customer. It's not like I care if they do or don't. Like I want to give the value because um, they got to go through a few extra steps. So, you know, there's pros and cons to everything. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. How else can people get in contact with you? Uh, so I'm on Instagram as HMFIC underscore Matt. Uh, my website, hmficmarketing.com. Um, I think TikTok is just HMFIC Matt on there. Pretty much most everything is... I think even Facebook is HMFIC underscore Matt. You know, they're all, okay. I try and keep them all branded the same. Everybody always has my name on platforms, so I can't do that. But they're pretty much all, even Twitter. I hardly use it, but so don't really follow me there. <laughs> uh, but everything I try and do is like HMFIC Matt, just because okay. the brand of the business. So. HMFIC Matt everywhere. Two T's, two T's, not a one, two T's. Two T's and we'll have, sorry, two T's and we'll have all that stuff here in the, the bottom, the show notes there. Um, Matt, what else? Anything else before we wrap up? Man. Um, so much information already. It's yeah. So, so much information. I know when you wrote me your email, one question you like to ask everybody is where they would buy. Ah, yes. I remembered that. And I thought about it this morning 
And while I don't know the specific location, I would love to buy my own island and get all done up and have my own island to just chill out, have my family there, maybe throw some cool events. Think of like my own Necker Island. Something like that would be pretty sweet. Necker Island, Ed Milet's Island. I'm not sure what he calls that. Oh, yeah. yeah. He did just buy something, huh? Yeah. He did. He bought an island. There's like goats and deer and a bunch of houses on it. It's massive. That would be awesome. See, that's that that that's what I would buy. That would be the land I would buy. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, I, I agree. I think I'm 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 on the island kick right now too. Oh, that would be so cool. I so, think I'm on the island so kick cool. too. Yeah, we'll have to get together, get a helicopter, get a plane or something like that to get us. Oh, there. totally. I'm gonna get my either a helicopter or my or you know uh, a plane, whatever pilot license, whatever they call them. I'm gonna get one of them. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're 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 gonna have to work together on that. Uh, on, on that deal because i like i like a, i want a little bit bigger island and right now oh, kind of so smiles. it would be cool and then we'd have some pretty cool events and parties and stuff oh like man can you imagine you can, yeah and hang it's out gonna get out of control family. perfect right on matt uh thanks for being here matt i really appreciate yeah. it guys i hope you learn a ton hmfic marketing um contact matt on all social media uh otherwise guys until next time i'll see you in land life See you guys.